really see the true pecking order. Whereas not not only that, in Europe where they're playing to back like that, teams go shit. We're getting you know we're getting pumped right now. We need to adjust this right away because we play again next right. weekend. And they're constantly evolving as teams. There's no downtime. I like how we're in the knife round and one person. What is Valens doing? What is the rest of his team doing? Hey, they're just hanging out in T spot at the moment. What is this? This is new meta of a knife round. It almost looks like automatic readied up, and then like ran to the bathroom, and he hasn't he hasn't moved. Um, all or right. Ran to get like a water. Well, this is going to be fun. I don't even think they're gonna knife. Like what? <laughs> I don't know. Roka like, Roka takes on? the advantage. <laughs> yeah, Roka's just standing there staring at them. So they have killed everyone that was in spawn. Valens eventually comes back and only manages to get the one on Desi. That was um, yeah, Nihilum. Never mind what we said about them wanting CT side. <laughs> well, Elevate certainly wanted it. They take the advantage. Actually, I wonder if Automatic's still having problems because he just dropped again. So I'm wondering if if he readied up and then actually had a lag out issue. In which case, crushed. they could argue, yeah, they could argue that they would redo the knife round. I'm sure Elevate would be pretty generous. It's only a knife round. <laughs> it's, it's only a knife round for that CT side Inferno. No, no but at deal. the same time, it's not like it's, yeah, a, no, it's a pistol round or something along those lines, right? So, it's a little easier to adjust. I, it doesn't look like it. There's no pause at the moment. Is this real life? Are we actually getting live right now? It looks like we are, so I'm surprised by this massively. They're going to go into the pistol round. A man down. No pause called. Wow, very interesting stuff from Nihilum. XP3 gets Sanks to open it up, and Semphis brings it back, so we're into a four on three, not a four on four. Despite only one kill coming out each way, Hiko's gonna lurk up toward the apartments right now, wants to get this shot onto Storm, does so successfully. That drops out, open into the A site. Rush, the only one still there, front library. Desi rotating over now. Roka's gonna stay put in B just to make sure they can't work backwards, but no smoke still to work with here on the T side. They've used everything they bought up. But they've got Rush stuck out in Moto. There's nowhere for him to hide right now. Roka's finally getting on his horse to rotate over, and this bomb has gone down. So despite being down a man early in the round, Nihilum has pulled this back in their favor. But watch out, coming in from behind, it's Desi. He manages to pick up one. Semphis catches Rush on the front side, and they turn back. And now Semphis has two, but it's Roka to respond. Semphis does fin finally drop down, and this USP wants to do all the damage as Hiko just dodging out of it has 10 HP still to work with, and he does it perfectly. Up and over the box, well peaked by him. one nothing. Nihilum, a man down in the pistol round, and they still pull that off. Yeah, and they do it because there was so much pressure put on B, it caused some rotates to force some elevate players out of the bomb site and over towards the wraps side. It was only Storm who's jumping up on a balcony, and Hiko actually lurks him, takes him out. That's going to be a matchup to watch. All, 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 all this uh, Inferno map is, is going to be Hiko Storm. How how Hiko is able to lurk Storm because Storm is such a patient player for years, just anchors over that pit area on this map for for his legendary teams like Complexity and and Hiko being the best lurker we have in North America. How is that battle going to go? Sanks opens up initially on XP3, and that's going to give him an advantage. So now they just sit back and secure. Do you need to be a little careful of Roka pushed up in behind the sandbags on B? Aggressive play as well from Desi and Rush. They've given up the arch side, but they'll try and secure themselves a bit more close range positioning with the pistols on the truck. And the bomb's actually heading in toward A, so they still have three men to take on this A site. They haven't forced a peak or at least a reconnaissance mission on toward that B site, but they are falling back, so they may still get back over there. Semphis does fire away with the SMG, does damage onto Desi, forces him back down the hallway of the apartment. It's going to be a B split. Valens yeah. has found his way in the wrap side into CT spawn, and they haven't spotted it yet, although here come three Elevate players rotating very quickly. Valens is just going to grab this angle. He's going to spray down one with the MAC-10, not able to get a second one, but the B hit is going to be on. Rook is trying to survive behind this triple box. And Automatic's going to be the last one in, but still leaving Roka not spotted. He does take down Sanks as a result of that. Semphis, a slow lurk, comes back around, and the bomb's heading back. So they split on B, they get there, and then with the rotates coming through CT spawn, they go all the way back around as Automatic won't even get to A. He won't need to. He go, Semphis, they'll close out the round. There's your two star players that we've talked so much about and anticipated so much from, and they've got the 2 nothing lead. Yeah, it looked very, very promising for Elevate there for a little bit, but Nihilum's able to sneak some players into great positioning in CT spawn. First for the wrap from Valens, who's able to pick one off on the rotate to B. And then Semphis, the other way, gets into CT spawn, is able to pick off as they rotate back towards A. So just completely destroyed by the amount of rotating they had to do. Elevate couldn't get a good read on it. 
Automatic wants to work up this time with Sanks. No early buy from Elevate. They don't have the money to do that. They can't possibly imagine pulling out guns this round. So watch for Nihilum to drop off of these SMGs in the next round and go for the full upgrade. We talked about it last map, how if you can catch them off, if you can get a third round buy out, you can catch off these SMGs. Well, they bought armor last round, so that, that's <clears throat> exactly. they invested in the last round, so they couldn't have anything going forward this round. Skybox bounce from Sanks, tries to get the nade down inside the site, but Roka doesn't really take too much damage from that. Actually, he took a little more than I thought he would. He's on 68. I thought it was only going to take him down a little bit less because he was staggered off to the right side of it, but... It must have gone just deep enough past second oranges to do the damage. Desi, passive hold on front library is... It's pretty passive play overall from Nihilum right now. Yeah, being very cautious. I, I think partially I look at them going for this rat play again. Desi headshots one of them though. They get into CT spawn. That's XP3 takes one down. Semphis gets Desi. But everyone at A has been annihilated. The bomb's over towards B. So Elevate is going to be reeling to try and get over there in time to get a couple more kills on the, as they try and enter the bomb site. XP3 is super low on HP. He's going to be the first one to cross over. Five for him. Does get past that smoke, finds his way into construction, and now they spam through. If they did that a moment sooner, XP3 already would him down, but Sanks knows he's coming. He's already been heard, but he definitely gets the shot, gets the advantage, make it two, under rush. Last player remaining Storm, and that spam that absolutely rained through for a good 10 seconds finally catches one out. It's a storm of bullet, kills Storm. How does that work? Oh, nicely done. Thanks, man. Nicely done. So we are going to see that first buy now from Elevate. So Nihilum, it looks scary in that second eco, but they actually manage both those eco rounds very, very well. And because of the second round buy, it is going to be mostly light armor on the side of Elevate. They have four smokes. I believe Desi already threw, might have already thrown his, but what you don't have is any kits. That's going to be the big deal. If they're forced to retake a bomb site, not a lot of kits remaining on that side. Actually, zero kits whatsoever. Mm, that's a huge debate. That's a huge problem as well. Well, look at Desi getting aggressive. Yeah, Desi aggressive in halls at the moment. He's got backup with him. They're both aggressive right now, so they're doing a little bit of a delayed aggression. They might be able to catch Chico out. They do. Oh, oh Semphis peaks. Oh, that's unfortunate. They actually set up the crossfire perfectly, but Storm oversteps it to try and peek further down the stairwell and walks directly into Desi's spam. Oh, that hurts. That, that was perfect play right up until it wasn't. Well, they still have a main advantage, so now they kind of force, they kind of funnel this attack over towards B. They just throw a smoke out. Oh, and that stops the Hylum cold, and, and they have zero map control over towards mid and over towards A. Nothing in the halls whatsoever, so uh, this is such a tough spot to be in as a terrorist team. The smoke just goes down, and it's kind of blatantly obvious that you're just sitting behind the smoke over at B. And Hylum's... Second guessing everything now, trying to find this opening as XP3 is going to fall back onto the CT side. So him and Roka have the crossfire firmly established on B and with that late smoke to come out. This gives Sanks a really awkward opportunity, but he's already on the inside of it. And that means he does get the shot on XP3. Good entry coming out. Flames still on the stairwell. Roka finds the first automatic response perfectly. And this bomb will go down. Rush finds your last man over on toward the A site. That's Valen. So now it's back down to a two on one. And look at the HP for automatic. Not a lot to work with at all as Desi tries to force the issue. Hasn't spotted him up so far because he hasn't peeked out smartly so on Automatic's part, but he has to be so careful with his movements because he's limited. And in the open, there's the first kill, does get spotted up. So close to getting back in the corner, wanted to flash himself to buy himself time, but couldn't get there. And now Nihilum give up their first round, Elevate on the board, 3-1. to one. Yeah, nice trade there, that 2-on-1 from, uh, from Elevate. So they're going to win that one, but uh, important to note, they, they go down to just Desi, so their economy is still not moving whatsoever. They're still in a very, very tough spot. That plant is going to let Nihilum pretty much have a full buy, able to drop a gun over to Semphis as well, and just Elevate. It's going to be another situation where they're forced to sacrifice nades and, uh, and you know, head armor and even, even kits to get what they want to use here. So we're going to be another tough round for them. Although they do choose to buy Famuses instead of uh, instead of the Colts, just so they can get kits, so they can have Molotovs, so they can have uh, smokes for these choke points on Inferno. An interesting, really passive B hold so far from Elevate. We see a lot more teams more and more try to get more presence out. Bit of a mixed approach. There are some teams that still play passively because it does give you the information that they are pushing up bananas so you can funnel them from the opposing side. But usually we're seeing teams get deeper and deeper inside banana. TSM is like case in point to that. To that style of play, I think it's mostly because of the economy. They don't they don't have all the flashbangs, the nades that they'd like to use to soften up opponents who might be watching for that, or Molotovs to keep them back. So they don't want to use what little utility they have on taking that control of banana. So they're just going to let them have it and play behind the choke point. Storm's going to 
fall off and play the backside angle from the apartment. So that does mean it's a little bit easier to get the entry point, but it also means he's in a better position to hold top mid, and that's where the aggression's coming right now. As Semphis is already through, they flash themselves around the corner, and Valen through the smoke finds Desi. Both sides now fully exposed, and Hiko going all the way back the long way to get the bomb. That's the unfortunate part, is this entry's been successful, but they don't have the bomb to work with. That allows XP3 to rotate over. Valens gets caught. Brings us back to four on four, so the good work comes undone. But based on that call that he was shot through Arch, they've all gone back onto Banana. They'll try and get in, but Roka won't allow them, and XP3 gets back as well. Good rotations from him on both sides. He's picked up a kill on either side of the map now, making a double on B and a massive amount of damage onto Hiko. He may get further still, and that pistol finishes him off. Great play from XP3 that round. Four kills and perfect awareness. Yeah, I'm not sure if leaving that bomb so deep in the mid was was a mistake, but it looked like they almost wanted to come up rap side and then realized it was back there with only 30 seconds left, so they're kind of forced into a B hit once they pick it up, and that's a little bit unfortunate because that entry up mid was great. But like you said, XP3 with a fantastic round, and more importantly, they prevent a bomb plant, so no bonus money out of that for, for an Ilum, so they're forced onto an eco here. There's your deep smoke that time. Eco spots it. But like you say, eco for Nihilum, so it might not be worth pushing up and getting close. Because all you're going to do by getting off the bomb sites facing an eco round is potentially giving the pistol shot a headshot and dropping a gun that's unrecoverable and picked up by the terrorist. XP3 won't allow it to happen. Valens gets spotted and taken down. XP3 loves that peek through that smoke to just start spamming. He, he puts, himself in, uh, puts himself in the open sometimes, but this round it's an eco, so they can't really punish him with an AWP, but he does love to do that. Remember when I said everyone that talked to me at Copenhagen Games got sick, including Device? Yeah, Emma Elite was the other one. She's in chat reminding me of that. I told you I got everybody sick, but Roka's on fire himself right now. A little bit of a disease in behind the sandbags. He takes down Automatic Sempus. He's not done, though. Look at that double shot from the P250. Now there's a chance to move forward as they have to rotate over, but that nade almost catches to Sempus down to 19 as Hiko does fall right into the, into the radius of it, so... Bomb will go down, but it's still a full advantage for Elevate. This is a decent eco, though. They've picked up the two rifles, and with this bomb down and the damage being done, this is a winning situation. Potentially more, but Rush won't allow it. He's going to pick up them both, and Storm will go through the fire to get the defuse. They're going to tie this game up, but that's a pretty good round, I have to say, from Nihilum. Yeah, they're doing a fantastic job uh, of dealing a lot of damage to Elevate. You know, keeping their economy low. So this round again, you're going to have to see some dropped weapons. You might not see the Molotovs and the smokes and the kits that we want to see out of a defense. Uh, may not even see all rifles. It might be some Famuses, or it will be a rifle, but it might be a Famus instead of a Colt. So, and you just look at it. They won three straight, but they, they have nothing to show for it in the bank. You know, Roka and, and Desi have around 1,500, but outside of that, everyone's just cashed out. So up alt mid, Semphis and Hiko working together. It's interesting to see them lurk together. It's kind of like the who's familiar with who thing. The other three have all played together. These two have played together. Let's send them off on their own missions. Roka, XP3 again, passive on Banana. One smoke a little bit deeper than just on the connection point. It's actually out at the trunk of the car. But they don't push forward on it this time. They'll set up the, the traditional crossfire. And XP3, this is uh, it's a very fragile spot, of course. But as soon as he gets smoked, he can rotate back through... CT uh, construction and get onto the spools, but it's a bit of a long rotation and one smoke will cover him off. That's exactly the case. So XP3 is already off the site. So Roka goes back toward, yeah, that's exactly the rotation they're looking for. Here goes XP3 back through construction. He's going to head to spools. Roka goes back to second orange just to stay out of dodge, but the entry's already coming in. Automatic's found his way around the corner and they both go down. They're both caught on a perfect crossfire setup from Nihilum on the way through. So Rush now has to get over quite quickly to join with the rest of his teammates on the retake. This should be with a safe call. Down. Yeah, this absolutely needs to be bombed down and five members inside the site. There's no point in trying to get in on this. Yeah, and this is a good call, and actually, I don't even think that they should be waiting around. Desi just waiting to try and find Exekill. There he goes, finally leaving, so they're going to have three rifles heading forward into the next round. Nihilum, uh, their economy isn't very strong as well, so don't want to lose too much, you know, dedicating themselves to a chase or a hunt down. They do have two players, Semphis and Hiko, going for maybe one or two kills here, but Elevate should be able to buy off this, whether it be dropping a Famas to one of their teammates, uh, dropping a couple, actually, between Roka and Desi, or, or just buying up pistols. This will be a pretty decent buy out of them going next round. But that round, Nihilum, not even trying to take map control like we've seen them do. Hiko and Semphis normally going to halls and trying clearing something out. That round, they just all five go banana and just explode into the bomb site. 
And it was the entry fraggers. It was Sanks and Automatic that we've mm -hmm. talked about, those two players. They were the ones that found the entrance kills under the end of the bomb site. So nicely done by those two. And they limited their angles beautifully. Completely covered off each angle on the way through. They worked over to the bottom side of the barbecue. They knew that the backside, yeah. Emo was the only position they didn't check. And that he has to force the peak from Emo, not the other way around. But there's your shot on a rush. He gets forward, gets caught out. Roka does one more get one back, and actually XP3 gets up close. That gives him a rifle. He can speak back out, and they line it up. Oh my goodness, XP3. A quick 3K turns the round entirely on its head. It's all on Hiko now. That is the round that's going to put Cephas on tilt, because you see triple pushes out of that. They got three kills, and Cephas comes up, and there's a fourth one. XP3 with just a pistol hiding with him. A great call by Elevate. Sucker him into thinking it was a triple push, and then he sprays down a couple to end it. So it's down to a one on two now, and that's brutal. That's absolutely brutal for Sempus to pop, pop, or pardon me, to overstay that welcome, like you say, with XP3 to pop out, rather. And it all became because he got that M4. Went down, still in reach, grabs it, pops out, spams. Man, disaster. So Hiko has to play this slow. He's forced into this situation now. He does know the defense have to split up. There's 30 seconds left. They haven't spotted him in a while, so he could have fallen back as a result. Desi is on A, XP3 on B. So it's essentially two one-on-ones that Hiko has to win. Does have the yep. bomb, does have the AK. Yeah, but with the time that's running down at the moment, XP3 is playing this brilliantly because he's not going to give himself a chance to be killed inside the bomb site. He's going to wait to hear the plant go down, and then he's going to find a really, really strong positioning. Desi's doing a similar job, actually. Now that nade's going to give away position. Now they're going to push onto him. Desi's already rotating over. And the bomb has to be held. There's only seven seconds, or does it? Yes, XP3 gets him regardless. Hiko went for the kill in the end, but won't matter. Excellent execution from Elevate. Like you say, great patience. Four to four. XP3 really having some great rounds so far early in this match. Only eight rounds in. He's had two rounds with quad kills uh, and gun rounds. So he, he's come up huge for them here. Uh, and Hylum could still buy here. You see they're buying out full AKs at the moment. So they're going to give it another go. Yeah, well, that's not to be surprised. A lot more teams forcing out. I mean, there's no reason. If you can, if you can get AKs as they have done with decent aids, there's no reason not to. Every time I say not to, I found like, feel like I'm saying not to, and then I just get mad that he stole my razor blade. <laughs> you poor guy. Cephas gets caught out. Roka looking around the edge of his smoke, sprays him down, hits him in the head. That's going to be a man advantage for Elevate now, and once again, there's no map control for Nihilum, so they're not spreading out. They're not trying to really do anything up mid. They've done it once, but other than that, it's really been just bullying their way into the B bomb site. This is the crossfire. They keep trying to play this with XP3, but that's the smoke. It's so easy to cover off, so now he has to go the wrong way. This is how Automatic got the entry last time, because he was able to push up without that initial for, this initial excuse me resistance from XP3, and they got those entries, so they need to be careful of setting up that crossfire. Yeah, but look at how they've baited out all the utility and aids of these players. There'd be only one flashbang left on Aroka. They've, they've used all their smokes, they've used all their counter flashes, and now they're going to come in. And Aroka does get the first sank drops, but it's immediately countered off by automatic. And three players remain now for Nihilum. Roka's already dropped XP3 though, brings it back, makes it two more for him. What a round, what a match, what a first half he's already having as Nico, Nico, Hiko rather, excuse me, does finally put him down, but he finds himself lonely. And no longer alive. Rush getting the kill, and that means they finally take the lead. It was a late charge back into it. They started off losing the pistol, but they've been in control since, I have to say. Yeah, XP3 that round, he, he's just got the hand of God working for him at the moment. He's spraying at Hiko, and one of his bullets goes astray, goes through the smoke, and hits Valens in the head on the other side of the smoke. So he's getting a lot of fortunate uh, fortunate shots going his way, but you're exactly right. 13 and 7, monster half so far, only 9 rounds in. And it's just, this is kind of surprising that we're seeing this out in Highland. Not, not gaining map control, not spreading out. You've seen Hiko and Cephas got shut down on that one Halls round that when it was stacked and they haven't really gone back to it. It's just been all waiting for a smoke and B to disappear and then just hitting it. Storm wants to hold off on this apartment. This time he's changed it because they don't have the same setup. With Desi over toward Arch, he'll fall back and play it passively from pit. This means Rush has the option of playing the crossfire from in sight, which he is doing, or setting up a crossfire with Desi. So it's basically where do you want to strengthen? How much room do you want to give up on the, the, the A take? Obviously, if you play the crossfire up close to mid, you're not giving anything at top. But by letting them play passively, you still have good resistance in the A site. It's just it's it's more of a passive setup. It really comes down to Desi, or pardon me, to uh, 
rush to set that up and make that call, and it's gonna be passive. They'll come around the corner. Desi gets one. Storm's gonna get the other. Automatic finally answering, but that's the only kill they've found so far is Elevate. Doing well. Flawless on this anti-eco so far. Valen's the only one that's left. Tries to pop out, or at least will try and pop out eventually with this Glock and do damage, but Desi's the only one low enough to really have a chance against taking down. Yeah, smart play from, from Elevate. They're playing inside the site, playing in crossfires where they will, they can't give up a gun. No matter who dies, it's not going to give away a gun, the potential to, to lose even more players. So nothing left but for Valence to jump out. And he's just going to get taken out by Storm. So 6-4 to four for Elevate. And that pistol round that Nihilum won that, that gave him those three rounds was, that was one four on five. So they've only won one, they've only won one gun round so far. So that, that four on five victory on pistol round is really coming up huge for him at the moment. Big time. And it was, again, it was on that passive play on the B site where they set up yep. that crossfire and XB3 got forced out of position that, that that was the gun round they won. So they need to exploit little opportunities like that. They need to force this defense into awkward positions where they get caught out just on timings. Yeah, the question is, are they going to keep going back to B, keep going back to XP3 who's got the hot hand, or are they going to switch things up? They are sending players in alt mid right now. It's going to be Hiko. Him and Cephas might try and overtake this, and it is stacked once again, and that could be a real issue for them. They struggled with it last time, but Desi's going to eat a grenade down to 51 HP. That's brutal. And they're even going to Molotov off bedroom. That's such an aggressive play, Storm. Yeah, we talked about it this time. No TK to come out. Flash, or pardon me, Fire does go in, but Rush is going to pick up the second one. That's going to make it down to just two players remaining for Nihilum, it's Sangston Automatic. And so far the damage is uh, stacking up as Automatic, or pardon me, Sanks down to 72. And I don't think Nihilum's gonna be going back towards Halls anytime soon. The, these stacks that Elevate has, that was actually an old school Virtus Pro style stack uh, that they had going on that Elevate busts out once in a while. Uh, and they've just been killing it, absolutely crushing any kind of, any kind of Halls play from Nihilum. And there's there's really, like, there's not much these last two players from the Highland can do. Like, where are you going to go? You, you might as well, I almost feel like they should just save their weapons, but. Yeah, that's, I mean, they had a save in the last round. This is their first buy since 150 and zero on the two remaining players. Yeah. Yeah, th th this wouldn't be a bad idea. They are holding station. There's four seconds. The problem is if they're going to die, they need to die before the clock expires. Desi up the stairs. Does take down automatic. Completely blows his head off. In fact, the ragdoll almost went through the friggin' window on the backside. Backflip. Now Sanks is even getting chased down. And oh, he's oh, going to oh, win he that to battle. Stay alive. Has to stay alive. And he doesn't know money for Sanks. Then he was the one that was on zero. Yeah, no, nicely. I take it back. He was on 150. So he gets 300. To, oh, that's, that's, mm, that's frustrating oh, for them. <laughs> that's, that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was nice play by Elevate to execute that hunt down at the end, not let him get away with those weapons, so punishes Sanks. Even if they'd wanted the force buy there, they, they really can't with him at that low money, and that's even going to hinder his buy going into the next round. He go. Going to join the rest of his teammates. Yeah, like, I mean, the rest of them, yeah, like you said, they just sit back onto these tech nines because that's all they can do. That's that's so frustrating. You have to think in, in the comms that they'd have to be a little bit angry with him for that just to say, I mean, what, what else could he do? They chased him down. He took the first kill, but you got to find a way to die either before the time or make it your end all be all to stay alive because this, this sacrifices everything else for the rest of the team. And the anti-eco looking quite good. They've only found Rush, and that's all they're going to get. Desi comes around the backside, catches Senfis top mid, and they've doubled up now on ILM. It's looking good yeah. for Elevate. Yeah, but it, I, was, I was just about to say, it looks good for Elevate, and it feels really horrible for Nihilum because they haven't really had any momentum in, in you know, the last, what, uh, nine rounds or so. They, 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 they haven't really done much since that pissed around the two ensuing rounds, but they have four rounds on Terror Side Inferno, and that's that's pretty solid. So they have three rounds to get one more. They're going to be feeling really, really good with five. So, I mean, it feels much, much worse than it actually is at the moment. <laughs> oh, that nade. Doesn't get through the window. He's like Shaq at the free throw line. You get it? You get it, Jason? Yep, I got it. All right, cool. Just checking. <laughs> hey, what do you and Shaq have in common? Well, I don't know. What do we have in common? You both don't have hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Rush... You're good. <laughs> <laughs> so Russ comes up a little bit closer on that front side angle. Again, this is where Storm has the que has the call. And he's going to go for that support play at top mid and play the backside of Apartments because Apartments, you still have Desi to rotate back. So there's lots more support in that position. And they, this, this time they're playing not to give up the map control. And it's because it's a passive B. So this will lure the T side up the banana right now. 
And it's XP3 and Roka that have to hold, and again, XP3 is on the backside towards CT. This time, no smokes out, but already the execution comes in, and Roka goes down, but he gets one from the grave on his angst, because they stack up and don't push in soon enough, so the flames take him away. Bomb goes down, and they still haven't found XP3. Good, efficient play from him. Because this will allow the rotation to come over as Rush already finds Eco, Desi finds Valens, and they're gonna push forward more automatic. Not much he can do at all. Desi gets him. And now it's just down to Semphis and he gets caught. Storm finds him. This excellent retake. They'll get the defuse. Man, well played Elevate. Yeah, that, that looked like a solid round for Nihilum, but the pressure just gets put on by Elevate. They're searching for these gun battles. They're not letting them get comfortable in defensive positioning for this retake. So, you know, even XP3, who kind of just turns the corner spraying, he keeps them frozen in water inside the bomb site with his attention on him. Allows time for his teammates to come in before they can get set up. So, you're exactly right. A very nice retake by Elevate there. Looking good. So XP3 brings out the op this time. I like how it just brought up the minimap and circled it as if you guys can see my perspective, but you cannot. So Semphis trying to work up towards top mid, nade does come out, takes down 12 HP from him, but rather insignificant So the AK only needs one shot. There was a round very early on in the half where, where Ele or Nihilum came up mid through a smoke, got an entry frag in, and they had to fall back because they left the bomb back. They haven't tried to go up mid one again, but here it comes actually, but Desi's playing so close to the smoke. He's playing this like snacks. He's creeping through it. He's got everyone looking the wrong way. He's going to come through, but he's going to run right into the barrel of Valens. He's going to take him out. Rush over on Rapside does drop one, but he gets traded off. So a good eight take on the way here for Nihilum. Okay, finally opening up a site again. Because we saw them take over B last time, but the retake was what came against them. This time it's only Roka that remains, and Bomb's going to go down quite easily for Valens. They're going to spread out on him too, so they're pinching from either side. Actually, Hiko, I take that back. He fell back. I thought he was going to try and take the one-on-one -on -one with Roka, but no one else wants to peek from the front side, so he's not preoccupied. And there's no point giving away guns. They might as well, well sustain as much economy as they can into the last round. Yeah, and Roka needs to go for this, and that's great. He gets Hiko first behind the box. He's got two to deal with. Very slow chances of winning this round, but if he even just gets one kill, that's going to be massive for his team. He's going to try yeah, and smoke off the bomb, but... Yeah, patience from Automatic. He pops back out, takes him down. Now, that's exactly the point I was making about Hiko not taking that fight, because as soon as his teammates said they didn't, they didn't want to peek from the front side or made the decision not to peek from the front side, he's just giving away that economy. It turns out he went down anyway, but I agree with the call to, to play it more passively. Yeah, uh, the issue there, it didn't really come to too much fruition. We see a, a really nice buy out of Nihila, but if, if Roka had been able to manage to pick off one of those last two remaining players, they would have had to drop a gun, would have been some light utility on a couple players, and that could have had a huge impact. But for the first time in forever, Nihila bullies their way up mid instead of B, and they open up that, that bomb site very, very efficiently and get their fifth round. XP3, pop, flash over. Roka doesn't peek off the back of it. He's in behind Sandbag, so not in a position to get out in, into the lane. And Hiko, look how passive they're playing on these apartment picks. Not only does Hiko <laughs> pre-fire to give away his position, but that's all due to the fact that Elevate have been absolutely dominating him with that apartment aggression. Yeah, they really have been. You can see they're a little tentative in taking it. Elevate not playing it this round. They're getting aggressive over towards B. Roka's playing at the car. Ooh, There's a slight Roka gap spotted. in the smoke. Yeah, he was very, very patient. Wants to wait for a better shot. And he does get it. Sanks peeks out for him. And then he gets a second nice headshot on automatic. And then Roka should just fall back here. XP3 is dinked Valens. But they've done nutty. the good damage. That was absolutely nutty, that second shot by Roka. Popped out and just drilled the head straight off Sanks. Yeah, nine it is, it's very well done. 9 HP for Valens as well. So this is looking good for Elevate to make it double digits. And 10-5 against Nihilum's T side would be a pretty good start, I have to say. And again, Nihilum, this is their opening match of the season. We'll see if they can claw back in when they get over to CT. But like you made mention of in the pregame, it's usually CT sides that struggle with newer rosters. As Rush will take down Valens, Storm collects Eco. With the nade, and Sempis, the only one that remains, tries to make a case for it, tries to pull the 180 spam shot. It would have been quite spectacular if he had, but unable to do so. And Desi pops out. That'll conclude the half. Double digits indeed. Nihilum 10 to 5. And they lost the pistol round too, so that's a solid half from them. Yeah, it really is. A very solid half. Only winning two gun rounds was Nihilum, and yeah, Elevate's defense there looked fantastic. And like I said, that, that round was 4 on 5. So talk about a massive 4 on 5 round to win. But 
Now, now Island's got to be a, that's the power of winning the pistol in the two ensuing ecos. It gives you those three rounds. And on a map like this that's so CT sided, you've, you've got to feel very happy with five at the moment going forward. I mean, the gun rounds didn't look stellar or anything like that, but they had some opportunities. It was some nice retakes by Elevate that brought them back into it. And obviously, that, that hulls control uh, from Elevate, they only really called two or three hull stacks, and two of them just happened to be on the rounds that uh, Sempus and Hiko were trying to clear it out, and, and they just got annihilated. So. Kind of scared him away in the future from going back to it. Someone on the elevate side, by the way, did drop. So we're just waiting for him to get back in. That's Rush. Did you just make a Back to the Future reference? <laughs> God damn, son. You're going next level on me now. I have learned since you left. About time. <laughs> Took you long enough. No, uh, everyone's back in, so we should get back underway. And this is where Nihilum, we're going to see how they play this. I'm really curious to see how, the, how their default's going to go. Obviously, we've seen Sempus play in a few different positions for Cloud9. He was over toward Pit originally. Then when Shroud came in, he started to get out a, a little bit more aggressively toward the top of middle. But with no op, I mean, this is where we start to talk about this again. There's no designated op, or they can't really get those early picks. We didn't actually see op come into it much in yeah, the first half between either say. teams. But... But usually you do start to see, like, especially if, if a CT side needs rounds or wants to get early advantages, the ops the way they do it. And, yeah, really curious that we didn't well, see one at all first time. I, I think part of it, too, is XB3 is the opera for Elevate, and he was just he was just going beast mode with the Colt, so why go away from it? So pistol starts. It's going to be alt mid presence right now from Elevate, but this is a decent pressure and response from Nihilum as they're going for a similar play as Look at all the nades Elevate did. And there's tons, tons of smokes to delay the push. A couple HEs, two HEs, and one decoy. No flash? Okay, there is one flash. Hiko's got a flash. Yeah, he's over <laughs> towards B, so it's only a smoke and a, and a grenade over at A right now, which is where the pressure looks like it's going to come into. And here comes the cell and the fake. Desi wants to work up with XP3. They don't go too far up, but they will get, force at least the smoke out from Hiko. This will leave them in position at B, and here comes the take. It's going to be five on three on the way into the site at A. And Sanks falls back already, so really passive hold. As we can see, all three C team members are in. The back side of the site over toward Pit. They're going to get the first. Automatic makes it another one for their advantage. And Automatic's going to pick up more than just that as he gets rushed on the way around. But XP3 is responding, at least trying to, as he stays alive inside the site for longer than he dare please. As Sempus finally puts him in the grave. And that's going to make it 10 to 6. Good start, Nihilum on their CT. Fantastic sequence from Automatic and Sanks on that rap side. They were playing lane close up on the porch. And they know the hits coming rap side. They can hear the footsteps. And they both charge over as a duo. Sanks is only able to get the first one, but Automatic gets two. And to kill three in that situation, they, they had a wide swing on Automatic 2 in that second kill. I mean, he was he was at a situation where he had to hit that last bullet, and he nails it. So they really, really stopped that attack. Both pistol rounds going the way of Nihilum now. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a huge thing to note, because we talked about CLG's ability to win games. When you win two pistols, you should pick up the match. But they only picked up two gun rounds. In the first half, that's that's. Um, I mean, brutal. it is inferno, but yeah, it's, I, I brutal. I, you're being harsher than I was gonna say. I was gonna say that's a struggle, but <laughs> I mean, if, to to put it blunt, brutal's uh, definitely a word you can use. And you gotta think there's big personalities on that team now. I know Sempus can be quite vocal in situations like that, so they gotta be maintain a mental capacity here to stay in this, but. Sanks will get rushed, Roka finding back into him, but Smoke on one side, Fire on the other, they're just trapped in a crossfire, and Hiko makes them pay for it, and Automatic, he picks up another double in this round. He's playing very well, he leads the way, by the way, on 15, it's Sempus who has 14. Hiko, only 8, Valen's even less on 5, Frag Distribution, not quite as tight as we see it on Elevate side from 10 to 15. Yeah. Actually, we, we have 10, 11, 12, ah, oh, no 13, we have 14, 15 on Elevate, damn. So close, so close. Yeah, I mean, we're going to see those numbers rise. I think part of the reason why I see Hiko at, at such a low level is, you know, he wants to lurk those halls, and they shut it down. They, they really took Hiko out of the game in the first half. And they're going to trap them. Look at this mid-presence coming down right now. Loka does at least get automatic, but Sanks will collect one, as does Vanlins, and Sank makes it a double. Aggression from both sides, so talk about a banana split. It's more like a banana hammock. <laughs> they just come around rapid on both sides. No, you got nothing. We're just gonna I leave that was, I was laughing far hanging. too hard to make a comment. <laughs> He's gonna leave that one hanging, man. Come on. Stop. I didn't know what you're doing there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ten to eight. We will get guns out this time, and we'll see if Elevate can exploit something.
And it is a uh, pretty def default passive setup from Elevate. Very, very far back in all mid. Very far back in Banana so far. And nothing really being given up by Nihil. I mean, they don't want to play aggressive either, so they are going to play behind these smokes. We see so often on Inferno, it's going to be automatic and Sanks. And you, you mentioned it in the first half. It seemed like, you know, their strategies, they sent three towards B that had Valen's uh, automatic and Sanks, and then Hiko and Semphis work together as well. So they are kind of splitting that up, making sure that automatic and Sanks are working together. Yeah, Valens and Hiko are going to be the ones on B. They're playing it a little bit differently than what we saw originally from Elevate. It's more of an aggressive crossfire with Valens up close. Hiko to flash him or smoke him back inside the site for cover. So they want to get that aggressive peek, which we didn't quite see as much from Elevate. Meanwhile, though, they are going to head over toward this A site. Passive hold from Sempis. He's back inside pit for these guys. So this is interesting to see that this, this is more of an at-home position for him, in my opinion. But Storm's going to find automatic. And now it's all on to Sempis. And great entry from Storm. Full awareness. Takes down both. Bomb gets in position. And a late smoke to come out in front of library. That'll limit Hiko's ability to ro retake. Excuse me. And now they have to consider what they want to save these guns. But Valens wants to they get should. aggressive. They should save these guns. Valens yeah. is getting very aggressive. Rush is going to get him. He's already behind him. So yeah, Hiko at this point, if he saves, it's a solo save. And he is, he's already gone. And he might be a little bit upset that Valens went for that because that was exactly the decision time right there. Yeah, that, that was just... That, that smoke execute came in and it, it just seemed like the defense uh, automatic and Semphis over in pit just weren't uh, super coordinated in how they wanted to play it. Semphis peaked an angle where... It looks like he peaked an angle where uh, automatic... Couldn't really see because of the smoke, and he was jumped up, and he was trying to get some clever kills on top of the smoke. He couldn't find anything. He did get one uh, on top of that railing, but, I mean, he was just, he was so exposed from so many different angles. That was just kind of a one kill and you're done uh, type situation. So a very, very nice, aggressive A execute by Elevate there. Well, this is where we talked about the gun rounds coming in. It's still only two right now for Nihilum because that's another one drop. They pick up three off the pistol, but yep. that's similar to the first staff. So they've definitely got to get their coordination going down to work off each other. They are going to go for a boost here for Automatic on top of the Atrium at top mid. And off Again, as well on Sinks. Well, this is where they wanted to try and flash Sinks back into the site. Hiko's still trying to play that support role, but they've already flashed him so far back that they almost do him down before he gets into Spool. Still manages to repeat takedown Desi. Good play, and he goes up close, so if they push forward with more aggression, it wouldn't be uh, well advised because Hiko was definitely in a good spot to catch them off on that one. Yeah, and now look at the, the offense from Elevate here is split up. Two and two situations, so they might be trying to fake over towards B or just kind of get a... Very cheeky, gimmicky kill through the smoke as they just spray. And there's there the bomb falling back. XP threw with the bomb falling back towards mid. So they're going to do a delayed hit. Or no, they're not. So he goes all the way down and he circles back. They have two smokes to work with and two Molotovs. So this actually might end up being uh, just a, a Molotov execute onto the B bomb set with three players and one lurking in mid. Yeah, Storm's that lurk player. Let's, let's not forget that he was one of the players that invented that role. But he'll fall back and join them inside Banana this time. There's your entry, but already Sanks is going to catch you out. Roka, so Rush now has to do this the hard way. In front force, in front style, does find Hiko with the spray control. And that means it's only the op left over at B. He's got to force himself into a better hiding position. So this potentially could give up the bomb plant. In fact, it does, because Sanks can't do anything up close. Now help will arrive. The cavalry gets in position. Semphis will come around, and Sanks doesn't care. He's going to go back out for that peak. Does catch out XP3. And Storm, very low HP, gets caught by that. Mag 7 of Halen's and Rush. Can he do anything from the backside? No. Too many numbers up against him, and Hylum, that gives them another gun round. This will bring it back to two rounds, the difference. Yeah, what a round from Sanks there. Three kills, gets the opening pick, gets one during the execute, and just holds the angle. Doesn't let anyone get up close. Holds that, holds that uh, construction and garden control for his team, so when they rotate in, they can just come right there and use it as a staging ground. Semphis even just running through fire like a madman to retake that bomb site. so... Elevate, they get in, they get the bomb plant, so they should be able to buy here. They do have Roka at low, low money, but they are buying up two AK-47s on Russian XP3. There's a third, so they are going to buy up and Roka with his trusty Deagle. Semphis just waiting backside of mid as Sanks goes for the peak, so it looks like Sanks is going to be the one that's going to be holding that op more regularly for them. And uh, we'll see, obviously last round makes an impact, but we'll see if he can make this a, a consistent thing because they definitely lack that on this team, as we mentioned. 
And another boost off Atrium. They weren't spotted the first time because they went toward B as we saw, so they'll go back to that play this time, hopefully catch them off guard. It's not a play you can do regularly because flashes are so susceptible of blinding that player, but if you're not expecting him, then it, is, it does account for you know one good possibility in, in, in at least one round. And sometimes that's enough. You just have to play these curveballs as you get the chance to do so. Yeah, and, and Sanks is actually going to switch things up on him. So he's going to bring his op his ABP over towards the A bomb site, watching mid. He's going to molly off middle. He's going to hold him back a little bit longer. So he, they saw him with the AWP at B last round, and this is going to be huge for him because it does look like they want to set up a mid B split at the moment. And he's got to have an effective round here. He does get the first one on XB3, nades, and falls back at the same time, finds a new angle, grabs Storm as well. He falls and automatic, and now it's just up to the B hit. It's Valens and Hiko guarding this. And Hiko gets traded off after getting one, and Valens is just going to clean it up. But Sanks, with that AWP, we didn't see it in the first half out of the defense out of Elevate, but it's looking very effective in his hands right now in, uh, in Highland side. Yeah, super, super encouraging to see that he's got this much versatility because we talked up, uh, I, I wasn't part of it, but you guys talked up at ESCA land. Everyone's been talking up his ability as a rifler. He was, you know, one of their top fraggers. If not, I think he was their top fragger at ESCA land. Um, and now we're seeing him pick up the op and be successful with it. This is uh, this is pretty impressive performance from Sanks. He's definitely someone that you have to take note of at this point. And it bodes well if he can combine it with the experience they now have on the roster. Valens will open up Storm. Good smoke out by Valens because they're pushing onto him. Oh, he just barely reacted to that because he was looking to go back inside the boiler room. And he catches out XP3 instead. Automatic gets down to Banana, and this is full aggression. Nihilum's just taking full control. Of course, this isn't anti-eco, but this is encouraging to see that they're willing to take aggressive plays when they have the chance, and it's all down to Rush. Yeah, and if Rush could... I mean, the best Rush can hope for is if he finds Automatic and Valens. They should be in positions where nobody can find them. They should be running and hiding in CT spawn. Let their teammates clean up Rush. He's just over by the hay cart trying to find something, trying to find any push that catches him off guard. And fortunately for him, he's going to find Hiko with an AK-47. He's just going to get sprayed down, so Nylum ties it up, starting to win some of these gun rounds, three in a, or two in a row, and then that eco round, but it is 11 to 11. Make a wish. I've seen 11-11 as a scoreline so many times lately, like it's almost expected in every close game you're going to hit 11-11. And I, I think you have to consider that it's like usually what it is, is like a 10-5 or a 9-6 scoreline with a pistol and then a gun round split. I don't know. There's yeah. something. There's some sort of mathematical equation that, in the money system, works out to 11-11 being highly probable in CS. If any mathematicians are out there and are up for a challenge, find out why those odds exist. <laughs> Good luck. So the Island switched up into this setup where it's it's a triple push into B now. Now that they have this op in Sanks' hand, that's where they've kind of switched it up. It's going to be a triple push B early on. Sanks actually goes for an aggressive peek in middle and then just falls back and holds this wrap side angle. Puts two rifles in the site, two Colts. Yeah, and now even a, a fourth. Different. Well, it's a, and that's okay. A little different from automatic because, again, by throwing this deep smoke, automatic gets a little more aggressive. If he goes down, they can still call this rotation back. So, yeah, the fourth player on A, that makes a massive difference. It might even make a massive difference right in this round. It looks like Elevate wants to force their way at mid, and I'm not sure they're expecting the stack to come into play. They should expect Sanks to be at this corner. He was just here last round, but they're gonna, just going to come up lane. And Valens is in a really sticky situation behind these smokes. And the problem is they threw out all those smokes, but they oh, haven't really taken bad read. control. It's a horrible read. They fell off it. I thought for sure this was in their round. So this actually works for Elevate's passive play because they used all those smokes but didn't really push up anywhere or try to take control of them. But now they get the sight just simply from Nihilum second-guessing themselves and rotating off of it. Interesting that they got that far out of position just when it looked like Entirely their round. Four players already in the A site. Early rotation based on a deep smoke at B, but Elevate get the bomb down three on three, and the retakes coming in all from the front side. So basically, they're just going to run in and hope for trades until they narrow this down into a probable situation, but that's not going to happen. They've still got three men up, and it's only one left. It's Hiko for Nihilum. It is Hiko, let's not forget, who can do these kind of situations, but not with that low HP, and Roka doesn't care how much HP he has. He fires away. Oh, I thought it was a headshot. Weird. I saw sparks fly. But nonetheless, they get the kill. It's 11 to 12 now. Elevate back in the lead, but Nihilum have definitely made this a lot closer. Yeah, and that, that's such a, that's such a bummer. Yeah, you said it. They second guessed themselves, and I'm not sure. Uh, it was all the smokes that were thrown by Elevate. You know, kind of not faking an execute, but it just looks like an execute. And they stayed silent afterwards. They were just so quiet that Nihilum was like, "All right, they must have thrown these smokes and just ran back to B." And they wanted to get a jump on it. Unfortunately, they had the perfect read originally. And that's just a bummer. They've got to be kicking themselves for that one. But it is going to be another buy. They do have an op in Sank's hands again. Able to afford that after winning three straight. So 
Another chance to reset the money here very, very quickly. And Automatic and Sanks, 20 kills each of them, playing very, very well are those two. Desi, hoping someone tries to get over aggressive on that peak in that gap in the smoke. As XPM Elite comes over and joins in on the action. Sanks is going to re-smoke it as well, so they're just biding themselves some time right now. Yeah, holding them back just a little bit longer, and it's it's very similar. It seems like Elevate, this is the play that they want to make that's worked for him a little bit, is just bowling their way up middle late. Nade's going to do decent damage, but here comes the Execute. And this one's going to be a fake. This one's going to be a fake, and they've actually fooled the Hylum a little bit. Everyone is rotated so far away from B. It's just Valence who's got to fall back. He's He's got a Molotov, so if he sees smokes and executes come out, he could just drop it, but he's got to do it quickly. That's a tight angle for Sanks to shoot at, but gets fortunate that Desi was looking for the same shot in return with the AK, and therefore the op comes away with it. Hiko now gets one into rush, but Storm goes back into Valens. This will open up the B site just a little bit as Hiko's forced back inside construction. Sanks and Automatic are on the early rotation. Sempis just lurking back a little bit to make sure that they aren't going to sell a dummy, but with the bomb down, he'll now join in on the retake. But no progress being made. These smoke's still holding them out. That finally dissolves. Good setup here from Roka up close. But this puts a lot of pressure on Storm to hit the backside shot. As already, the other two have gone down. He does hit the first. Hiko gets dropped. But again, Storm's in a high pressure situation with all three aiming directly at him. They'll just rush him out of position. It's automatic to get the kill, but it was easily either of the other two. Right, but uh, uh, the real kills were Sanks with that ADVP being the entry fragger. And, uh, I was questioning it on, on that last one when Elevate took over that A bomb site. Sanks with the op was leading the way into the site and just kind of got sprayed down, misses a shot, and then he's kind of ruined. That time, leading the charge coming through coming through main and, and just clears out the player in banana, clears out Roka, who's hiding at grill. And then the last player falls, so a nice retake by Hyland. That resets the money, and despite the play, Elevate can't buy. So another save round for them, 12 to 12 at the moment. I have to say, Elevate's, excuse me, Elevate's discipline is uh, quite impressive at times. Obviously, they, they've made this game come back to 12-12 on Nihilum's case, but in the first half, we saw really disciplined plays. Again, there, they don't re-peak a lot on those retakes. They just got overwhelmed that time. But, you know, you look at someone like Liquid, who often gets a little bit, a little bit cocky to try and get that early advantage just to catch one of the rotators out and oftentimes it backfires on them. If it works, you look like a genius, but it's such a high-risk play in the post-plant. Elevate's very good at sitting back and just waiting for the retake to come to them. And right now, the battle's going to come in. On to B, Valens will take down Desi, but Rush, there's your Tech-9. Gets Hiko back, and already around the corner, they'll take it further. They're going to go into Valens as well, so the Tech-9's getting the full advantage right now. This bomb goes in. Is there damage on Rush? No, that fire doesn't extend far enough, so they'll get this bomb plant. It's three on three. XP3 picking up the M4. Automatic crosses over just before that smoke disappears, and Sank's going to find out XP3. Good nade in. That catches out Roka. Well played. Double naded, in fact. As Rush now finds himself lonely, but decent eco. Two entry kills, three kills total, and a bomb plant. It's not too bad, but Nihilum now have control. One round up, 13-12. I'll tell you what, the question that I posed before we saw these matches was who is going to be the opera for Nihilum, and Sanks right now is putting on a clinic at the moment. Mm -hmm. He is going beast mode, and you know, I also mentioned that they, they had Sanks and Automatic last season where we're like kind of swapping op duties. I don't remember which one was which, but one was T side, one was CT side. I'm assuming by the display we're seeing that Sanks was the CT side, but... He had some great, great shots on retakes as well. He might be a good T side opper, as uh, and look, you know. Look, look at his setup right now. Okay, he, there's the flash he was waiting for. He actually had his back toward mid, was waiting for that pop flash to come out and then go for the pick, but he actually fell off it a little bit sooner. But just really clever plays from him. A lot of stuff you sort of see in the European game, like you say as well. It was TSM who does a similar op setup to what you're saying they did last year, where Device tends to be your T side opper, but then it's Cajun B and Kerrigan on the CT side who bring it out. So they have that ability. They've definitely got dynamic on their team. That's 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 impressive to see. I have to say for fragability as well, there's lots to talk about like a dream team. Not so much for roles, but imagine Sanks and Nitro on the same team. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be some dirty stuff. And automatic as well. I mean we keep Yeah, he's up at twenty two and fourteen as well at the moment, so a lot of young guns playing very, very well early on in the North American Pro League. And we do have a four-man, uh, actually a five, fifth man's coming over, so this looks like a full-blown execute onto the B site. Hiko is just about to rotate, but he's got to come back. These are the Fnatic smokes. They try to flash themselves through it, but little did they know there's fire on the opposite side. So not only will they rock, walk in blind, they'll walk into the barbecue. Rush 
It does get Valen still somehow, so this brings it to three on three. They've done a decent job for themselves considering the situation, and as the bomb goes down, they'll throw out an even deeper smoke on the backside of the truck, making it a lot harder for the vision to be had from the CT side. And double stack emo. I haven't seen this in a very long time. And smartly, they change it so that Desi's the front man. He's got the low HP. Even if they need it, he goes sakes. down. Wow, what a shot on Rush. Very up close and personal, but if they, even if they need this right now on the backside for Desi, they won't expect both players to be there, but with Storm dropping early, they do catch it out. Senthis, we talked about sorry, Corey. Well, Corey's sorry this time. It's Sanks that goes down, but they're going to get this defuse. Or will they? Oh, yes, they my just Lord. barely do. What a retake by Nihilum and Sanks with another 180 spinning shot with that AWP. Rush has got to... Rush has just got to be going terrible after that one. That Good nutty. lord. That was absolutely nutty. So 14-12 now. And not a lot of money. What are they going to do? They're actually going to force up. Wow, they're going to force up. They've got to win this right now for Elevate. Yeah, we, we talked about the first half. It was only two gun rounds for Nihilum. It's only two gun rounds for Elevate so far in their T half as well. So Nihilum just grabbing this match by the throat, starting to run away with it. Roka's getting a little bit aggressive all on his own. He gets surprised by Valens, but recovers nicely and drops him with a good headshot. It's just going to be Hiko all alone at B at the moment. They're not rotating one over to help him out. And I got to say, Hiko's been having a very, very rough match. Cephas gets mollied out of bedroom, but he's able to get the kill out of Storm. The equalizer, so crucial. Massive. They'll throw the gun back. This is smart from Roka because even if he goes down trying to get that other gun, he doesn't give up his rifle. So now they've all got weapons to work with. As Rush waits patiently, tries to pop out, or at least wait to pop out at top middle based on the call from Desi, who's lurking inside the hallways. This is sort of how we see Hiko play it. We talked about him getting shut down in the first half. Well, Desi wants to try and do one better, get a little further up as Hiko waits on B. But Sanks has already rotated over. This means Roka and XP3 might have a chance to work on this entry. They drop the bomb off, and here's your wall of smokes on the front side of the site. This allows Roka to push all the way over into the corner. But XP3 goes back for the bomb. He leaves him alone in the site. So Roka now has to find one kill, otherwise Sanks rotates back and he's already gone. He's already stacking up on the A side. This is really passive. This is very curious right now from Elevate. Yeah, This is almost desperate. They're going to wait for Hiko to push out of this, and, and Roka's got to find this kill. He does it, though. Hiko sees him. He's got to be very careful. He does spot XP3 with the bomb, but he digs him, and he gets him down. Hiko making a big play. He's going to save the round here for Nihilum. And Sanks cleans up Man. Rush. Nihilum looking strong, Elevate unbeaten thus far in the season, finally may have met their match and still put up good numbers, but this is really encouraging to see Nihilum already in this season putting up this number against a team like Elevate. Of course, they've got CLG immediately after this game. That's on DE Cash, so we'll see a change of pace again, but Elevate, let's see if they can force themselves back into this match point now for Nihilum. Three match points to work with. Yeah, three match points, and you have Roka and Desi with Deagles, and, you know, two Galils in there as well. Very, very light utility, so this has got to be a very fast, a, a hard-hitting execution out of Elevate. Don't really have a lot of utility to work with to kind of make something fancy happen. Semphis takes a little bit of damage, but gets the information, and Elevate spread out all across the map at the moment. Looks like Roka wants to try and find something. There is a player available to him. That's Valence. He gets just barely away with red HP. Need Skybox bounce. Oh. Nice throw, Roka. Beautifully placed. Takes down Valens. That brings us back to four on four. But still two Deagles. Actually, what am I saying? Four on four. It's five on four. They haven't lost anyone. How has my eyes deceived me? I thought I saw a man down on the HUD. It's okay. Please, please save me, Moses. We all make mistakes because all five players of Elevator geared up to take this A hit. Four of them are just going to come up lane side. It's only automatic over there. He goes down without a fight. Sanks gets one, but he gets traded off immediately. And now the call should be to save for Cephas and Hiko. Nothing they can do. The bomb site's taken over. They've got match points to work with. No they reason do have to go money. They do have money to rebuy, though. So if they wanted to, they could just try and weaken the economy of Elevate. And they might try and get closer and try and do exactly that. Just set up for these exit kills. Yeah, because they're in a good enough position and have enough health that they can stick around for this bomb plant for quite some time. Yeah, they, they don't have a lot of money, though. I, I'd just be scared to lose this gun because, I mean, you do, the last thing you want to do is have Elevate get to, like, 13 or 14 rounds Ooh. and then be forced to save, and Desi punishes Hiko for sticking around. Like you said, Cephas gets that kill, but he's kind of trapped in this corner. If the bomb deals damage, they could actually go for him, but Storm, he's going to. He's going to come back up right after the bomb explodes. But, and he does Cephas win that chops. fight. Wow. So, so they lose both guns. I thought it was reasonable to stick around because we do see Semphis and Hiko, the two players that were up both in six figures, or pardon me, 
four figures in the sixes. And the rest of them are on buy situation, but they could have dropped out. You're right. So there's two ways to win the economy war there. Is one is damage your opponents, and two is increase yours. Would have been nice for them to do both and well, get extra kills and not drop. Yeah, and drop a gun and put it in Valen's hands where he can have a rifle instead of a shotgun. And now if they lose this round, they're gonna be it's gonna be 15-14. It's gonna be pretty much a save round for uh, for Nihilum. It's gonna be a force buy, obviously, but it'll be like five sevens and deagles and armor. Look at the angle Sanks is holding though in this B. That really aggressive op angle at right at the corner top banana. Meanwhile, Storm though is lurking in toward apartments. He goes there to flash. I rather smoke. What's he gonna do? He's back and forth between the two. He's gonna flash Sanks back into the site so they can't overwhelm him after that first op shot because he's in a position where he has to hit that first shot and run. If he stays too long, they just swarm on top of his position. Sempus is going to find Rush. That opens things up. But Storm, in a good position, pushed up into the corner, catches the lurking Valens. So good read on the fact that Nihilum was going to get aggressive in this round, and that'll knock things back up on fours. Nico, though, forced back. So they've already looked for that initial peak. Sanks, we could just hear him rattle off that shot. Not able to hit anything, but he's back to safety. That's the key. As XP3 now smoking off on the left side, heads up toward middle on a truck. Bombs in his hands, and they've actually got a site quite open because Automatic's in on the front side. He's already coming up backside. Boiler catches one off guard, make it two. XP3 drops as well. Roka finally turns back into him, but all the while, Semphis has the position to work up from front library, and it's all left to Roka, and that's going to do it. Nihilum closed it out. Semphis on the double, but what a performance from Nihilum all the way through. A little bit Shaky on their T side. Again, we talked about how they only picked up two gun rounds, but man, their CT looked quite strong, and Sanks is the man of the match for me.